the day starts out and usually by the end of it, the schedule is getting behind. But I want to welcome you to the White House. I'm aware that to be a member of this organization, you have to become president of a substantial concern before the age of 40. I just missed it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> by about 30 years. <laughs> I know for certain that your enterprises are in better financial shape <laughs> than mine. You don't suppose I could arrange a merger with Bendix, do you? <laughs> I've always thought there were three kinds of people in the world. The, those who make things happen, and those who watch things happen, and those who ask, what happened? <laughs> All of you obviously are in the first category. As you well know, the recession today is worldwide. We've had, and I think sometimes we tend to overlook it, we have been living in the longest sustained worldwide period of inflation in the history of man. The inflation rate was in double digits in January 81 when we checked in here. Interest rates had climbed from less than 7% in 1976 to 21 and a half if you use the prime rate. Productivity was dropping, the savings rate was dropping. Taxes unfortunately did not drop. They were smothering the incentives of individuals in business, and you understand very well the meaning of the word incentive. Taxes actually doubled in those five years of 1976 through 1980. Since we took office, if you don't mind, inflation has been reduced by 59%. Since January, it has uh, averaged 5.1% in the first eight months of this year. The result has been a 40% drop in the prime interest rate. It isn't 21 and a half anymore, it's 13 and a half, and Bankers Trust and maybe some others have followed now recently, it's 13. We've cut taxes and people are saving more for the first time in a long time. But nearly 11 million of our people are out of work. And I can't tell you how painful it is to me that each day, millions of Americans who want work cannot find it. No one your age will ever quite understand when I say something of this kind how much I mean it because you didn't go out looking for your first jobs in the Great Depression of the 30s as I did. And anyone who ever lived through that period, unemployment is, is a horror word. We all wish there was some quick and easy cure for this tragedy this illness that was so long in the making, and I think we've learned that government's economic fine-tuning and intervention in the seven previous recessions since World War II resulted in only temporary expedience. Each recession, if you look back, was followed by another, with the next time more unemployment, more taxes, more inflation, and more and more economic problems. And each time, the, after the recovery, things of that kind, the unemployment rate and inflation rate were a little higher than they'd been before the, the start of the recession. And I just don't believe that the American people want to return to the scene of the disaster. According to the polls, Americans want a balanced budget amendment. And their will was thwarted by a minority in the Congress who were probably afraid that such an amendment might end their big spending and quick fix habits. But I just want you to know, and because some of you mentioned this on the way through, we're going to stay the present course until we have a real economic recovery. And we'll so we'll be back in January with another balanced budget amendment. As I said in Virginia the other day, to those who are faint-hearted and unsure I have one message. If you're afraid of the future, then get out of the way and stand aside. The people of this country are ready to move again. They're ready to move with a force and vigor that you young presidents can appreciate. And I thank you. And now, normally I know what the schedule calls for, and I've kept you standing there longer than you should be 
kept away from that table and everything, but I was just wondering whether I should just come out and mingle for the bit of time that's remaining, or would you prefer maybe, at least for just a few minutes, to ask a question or two? Uh, did, because I remember that uh, when we gathered in Acapulco, at the great convention of the young presidents, we did, <laughs> we did Q and A. As a matter of fact, I remember that you had in the audience a previous speaker by the name of Jesse Jackson, who, <laughs> who did some of the questioning. <laughs> but uh, does anyone have one or, yes? Well, I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, I think that we can hold the Senate and are going to hold our majority there, maybe even pick up a few. I know that in the House we're up against a tradition uh, that in the first off-year election of a new administration they always lose a considerable number in the House. Uh, now the Democrats are stating a very low figure of gain that they think that they're going to accomplish so that if they stick with tradition and get more than that, why then they can claim a great victory. And uh, uh, by the same token, I'm supposed to be pronouncing that they're going to gain a great many more so that if they gain less than that, I can say, hey, we did better than we were supposed <laughs> to do. But no, I think that there's a possibility. There's some strange things out there that have happened. In some states, uh, this is the reapportionment year. And in some states, the gerrymandering has been devastating uh, to us. As a matter of fact, in California, I think the only Republican district they left us was outside the three-mile limit. Uh, but um, even so, I'm, I'm optimistic. I've been out as much as I can and have met a number of our candidates here. They've come here. And I have to tell you, I don't think any party has ever fielded a better uh, set of candidates than we have running for office this year. So I'm going to be a little optimistic that we won't do as badly as we're supposed to do. Yes. President, the perception in the public is that things should be going a little faster. And yet, as business people and with your program, uh, it takes some time. Uh, is there a way that you are looking forward to setting that imbalance right whereby the people in general, who are not that economically sophisticated, can understand the enormities. It's a difficult thing to make them see. The, our goal and our target has been, or, or our target is, what we've been aiming at, is inflation. In, I believe in uh, completely that inflation has started the whole cycle that leaves us now. That was the number one problem when we started, according to the polls. Everyone said, cure inflation. Now everyone says, cure unemployment. But if you look back, unemployment's been coming on for a number of years. And if this recession were cured tomorrow, we would find that we have a normal higher unemployment rate than uh, we used to have in the old days because there is a higher percentage of Americans in the employment pool, a higher percentage of what, what's considered, uh, well, everyone over 16 is considered part of the employment pool. We have a higher percentage today actually employed than we have had in the past when there was no unemployment. And yet we have 9.8% unemployment rate. This means that more people that heretofore were not in the employment market are now in the employment market and seeking jobs. But when I said inflation is the thing and why we're targeting and why we're so pleased with what has happened with that, look what happened. There was a big zoom in the money supply in the last six months of 1980. And interest rates went up to 21.5%. Not because of the supply of money, but because the market was smart enough to know that that zoom had to be followed by a fall. And sure enough, in the first half of, of 1981, as you know, they pulled the string on the money market and pulled it way down to below even their normal uh, level. So the interest rates, but the interest rates have to be based on getting enough interest to make up for the loss 
of the value of the money you lend through inflation. If you're going to lend a dollar and when you get that dollar back uh, 10 years later, it's only worth 47 cents, you had to get enough interest to not only have a return on your money, but to cover that 53% loss. And that's what the 1970 dollar was worth in 1980, was 47 cents. Um, so when those interest rates had to go that high, the automobile industry felt it, and the layoff started because of the people that couldn't buy because of the high interest rates on the installments. The housing industry, because of the high mortgage rates, and then it spread to the associated industries, to steel and glass and so forth in the automobile industry, but in housing, to the lumber, to the real estate field, to the appliances that were not being sold because the houses weren't being built and so forth. So we've determined that the answer permanently is not what went on in those other seven recessions of the quick fix, temporary, costly government make work jobs in jobs with no future on the public payroll that just took more money for government out of the private sector. We feel if we continue getting inflation down to the interest rates follow down and people start buying again, plus the tax cuts that we implemented, that that is going to put more money out there in the investment capital pool from people saving and in the ability to buy, particularly if the interest rates come down. And as people begin to buy, that's going to turn the wheels of industry again and bring more people back into, the, uh, into employment. And when we do that, we think that that's going to be uh, a permanent recovery on a solid-based economic recovery not the quick fixes that we've, we've had before. Now, it is true that you've got to wait until that impact of spending is felt out there in the market and until they need to replenish the inventory and so forth for unemployment to show the answer. Everyone is waiting for October 8th and what the unemployment figures. Maybe there's going to be an increase. I don't know, but I do know this. It's a it's a recession in which there are over a hundred million Americans actually employed. And there's never been anything like that before in, in any previous recessions. So we're gonna, we're gonna stick to our course for a permanent recovery and we think that next year is going to show a solid one. We, we think we're on the, we've bottomed out and we're in that curve where you begin. People are saving more for the first time in a long time real personal income has increased where it's been going down for a period of a few years because of inflation and taxes. And I have been talking too long. I know if there's just, uh, well, uh, May I make uh, my presentation? Uh, all right. Forgive me. Oh, Mr. all right. Mr. President, firstly, thank you for receiving us in your home. It's a great honor for all of us well, to be here. And we all want to assure you of one thing. We've spent the past three days with members of your administration. Every one of them are dedicated, marvelous people who are 100 percent for the administration to show they want us to help tell the world what you're doing. We're with you, and as a token of our thanks, we have a piece of Stuben glass, which is a picture of the universe. This is made in Corning, New York. American made just as a symbol of our dedication to exporting more from America. Well, and thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And you can put that on the top of paper, and as the government gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the pile will get lower. Yes. <laughs> and we've been working on that, too. Good. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh. All right. I'll put it back in there. Now I'll come out. I won't mingle for as long, but I can mingle for a little. <laughs> well, thank you all very much for being here.